Hi everybody, it's Fiona Hooper here again with another edition of the Poetry of Painting, my weekly live show on Facebook. I know a lot of people may need to watch it and catch up, but welcome anybody who's watching live and welcome to you if you're watching on catch up later on replay. So this week, it's my great pleasure to welcome back to the show, lovely poet, Martin Goldie. So hang on a minute, let me bring you in, Martin. Hello, good evening. Hello, Fiona. Hi. Nice to be back on the show. Excellent, lovely to have you back on the show as well. How's it all been going? You keeping well? Keeping well, thank you, keeping well. Good, good, yeah. And uh, I know you've got some news to tell us about later on. Um, so we'll, should we do the poems first? We, yes, absolutely. Done. Yep. So. Um, this week, we've both written poems about my painting, Light and Shade, which is on the wall behind me here. And I'll just put that on the screen as well so that you can see it a bit better. And uh, this one was actually painted on a week's painting trip to the Norfolk Broads, uh, which is pre-COVID back in September 19. And it was called A Brush with the Broads, a whole lovely group of artists there all painting around that area and this particular subject was a really lovely quiet little pond uh, belonging to the farm where I and many of my fellow artists were staying um, as usual this one's in oils um, unusually for me painted with a brush rather than knives and it's 10 by 12 inches so that's the painting oh Chris is here with us again. Thank you very much, Chris. Lovely to have you with us again. And thank you for your lovely comments about painting. So, Martin, you particularly chose this painting to write another poem about. So would you like to do us the honour of reading it for us, please? Absolutely, Fiona. Uh, totally different from the, the sort of last po two poems I've done, which were uh, seascapes. I mm. just thought it was a, a lovely scene, so hopefully you'll enjoy the, sure the poem I've written for you. In the primal peace of a dawning glade, the new sun splashed its welcome light upon the slowly waking shore of a tree-lined still black pond. A soot-choked city's sweet-breathed peril, where fox and roe in night's blue moonlight slake, wherein the new day's golden light, flaming damsels busy flit, and pleasing breezes barely ripple the deep dark water's glassy surface, where mirrored mallards guard intently and cryptic waters, softly kissed by the frailest slivers of shiv shivering silver, glisten gently among the cheering hue of bowing birch and fragrant lilies, and the shrill staccato vocalise of a skittish blackbird's insistent reprise, and hidden in the glade's dark shadow, plump thrush perch on wet chewed branches, anxious for that maiden flight. In that dappled clearing, a gasping town's breathing lung, Light and shade stage their drama, and in a steamy summer's precious slow time, with little purpose, summer lovers lie forever, in their moment lie in concert, in flitting peace they lie reflective, gazing skyward below a different sky, before that purring black lily pond they lie, on a cushioned bed of naked, sweetly scented lemon grasses, in that eternal moment, wrapped in fragile dreams of what their time may reveal, they drift, enchanted in the dreamy light, below a hot sun burning, sun-kissed bodies tingling, fingers lightly touching, futures quietly pondering, and quiet in that tacit flight, hear whispered breath, touch still black waters, breathe deep the glade's lush air. Wow, 
that is lovely that is just so atmospheric and thank you just, thank you yeah yeah i really love that it's, it's so much in there and you know, a few things that are similar to some you know some of my words but just so much and such descriptive language just magic thank really you loved it <laughs> absolutely brilliant uh, i'm not sure if i want to read mine now absolutely <laughs> very, sure very, different. <laughs> very different from yours which is fine um because we all have our own styles the same as painters have different styles poets have different styles too so okay i'm i'm gonna get mine over with then in that case um it's it's a very different take it's written more from the perspective of when i was actually there so it's called Light and Shade, as per normal, the same title as the painting. A quiet retreat, tranquil and secluded, sleepily blanketed in a gentle hush. I set my easel at the water's edge, cushioned on grass, green and lush. The deep dark depths of the inky pool, with its archipelago of living islands, floating serenely on the glassy water, a deft touch needed by the artist's hand. A shaft of sun breaks across the, blank, the bank and light illuminates a vivid green. Be careful now, I must take my time. I really need to keep my colors clean. The music of nature surrounds me, a gentle hypnotic murmur of life. Mayflies dart around and hover, settling happily on brush and knife. The air is heavy with afternoon warmth. The sheep graze lazily in the pasture. I need to portray this mellow calm. Of colour and tone, I must be a master. Shards of light, reflections on the water, and a decision must now be made. How bright the lights, how dark the darks, so vital to depict the light and shade. So that's my one. Yeah, that's lovely. Yeah, <laughs> there is there is similarities in the sort of a uh, like the the dragonflies coming into yours as well as mine. And, yeah, and, uh, and they they were there were loads of them. They were they were just everywhere, and they yeah. they were literally landing on my my sketchbox, on my palette, <laughs> on my brush, and they were just so beautiful. And yeah, it, it was such a, a wonderful, peaceful place, which is something that you've really picked up on there. And you know the way that the the people lying there thinking about their dreams, and yeah. you can't do that in somewhere that's not peaceful. You know, you need that's that right. peace and quiet, yeah. don't you? Yeah. So, um, oh, well, that's that's lovely. I've really loved your poem, Martin. Thank you well, so much. Well, I thought they were both both fine poems. So. <laughs> Thank you. So, tell us a bit about your news. Oh, so, well, Chris has said very atmospheric poem indeed. Very deep. That was your one, Martin. Thank I you. absolutely agree with him there, and um, I like my poem too, and the reference to dragonflies. Thank you so much, Chris, for being with us again today. And I can't see who else is watching, but I can see there are some other people. So welcome to you. Lovely to have you on board, and please feel free to make some comments and get involved. So um, and ask questions. So yeah, so Martin, sorry, you're um, you've got some things coming up that you'd like to tell us about, I believe. Yeah, I've been I've been quite uh, busy and quite productive getting some poems written uh, since the last time I was on the show, and uh, a trip I had to uh, a mountain bosses it's in central Scotland it was actually with my son and myself, and we we spent uh, three days, two nights, in uh, two separate bosses. And the first of the both is uh, Ben Alder Cottage is a uh, quite renowned for for reputedly being a uh, haunted. So I, uh, I did a poem. Uh, basically, the first part is on the uh, the sort of the haunted uh, aspect of the of the both, uh, and the second was based on a, a true story uh, of the uh, the incumbent. Um, a guy called McCook who stayed in the Bothy about the time of the First World War up to about the 30s 
and uh, he stayed with his family in this totally remote uh, sort of cottage. And mm. uh, in the in the middle of winter, he took pneumonia. And his young daughter had to travel, I believe, about an 11 hour round trip to wow. summon a doctor. And uh, the doctor came, and uh, thankfully, uh, Mr. McCook was, uh, was healed of his pneumonia and continued to live, live on. Uh, but the, the poem was based on the, the ghost story and on the true story, it's sort of two parts. And uh, I sent it actually to the Mountain Bothy Association. And I get quite a quick reply saying that they would they would be trying to get it uh, published in this autumn's uh, newsletter, but if they if yeah. if they don't have room, uh, they'll they'll get it in a uh, in a newsletter next year. So That's I was brilliant. quite thrilled at that and uh, yes. quite pleased with the poem actually. So good, good. That's yeah. lovely to get something published like that. You know, yeah, well, it's not published yet, but a whole yeah. bit. Uh, it all be. going well, it will get slotted into one of the newsletters. Yeah. yeah, which is nice. Yeah, amazing. That's great. That's yeah. lovely. Yeah. So, and um, I believe some other news as well. You about poetry groups. Absolutely, I'd, I'd forgot about that. I spoke about it. <laughs> uh, and uh, with things opening out uh, with COVID, hopefully on the on the wane, uh, there's uh, open mix mic sessions uh, quite in Glasgow and in a place called Balloch that I've been in contact with, and uh, I'm going. To, it's only five or ten minutes, but it's ideal for maybe uh, reading two or three of your poems. So I, I'm going for a slot in the Balloch. A house hotel yeah. and also a, 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 in a Byers Road in Glasgow. A, a, they've been inundated with poets looking for sp slots, so I'm just waiting for them getting yeah. back to me with a, a firm slot a date to yeah. go in. So Excellent. I, yeah, I'm quite pleased at that. It's qu quite nice to sort of, you know, find an audience for the poems and. Mm. Uh, mm. Um, and will they be your your first open mic sessions, Martin? Yes, uh, this is uh, your show is the only the only sort of medium I've had for uh, sort of getting my poems out, uh, yeah. and I've uh, uh, a couple of uh, the, the local competition and uh, 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 the writers forum. I, I, I send in poems now and again to their wee competition, and I've had one commended mm. that, that, that was published. But other than that, I find it, it's quite difficult to, to get your mm. poems out. Uh, mm. So that, so this will be a good opportunity for that. Yes, yeah. Oh, well, I wish you all the very best of luck. Yeah. I hope you get a, a slot come through really soon for that as yeah. well. Be yeah. Brilliant. So have you any ideas which ones you're going to be reading so far? Well, I'm, to be quite honest, I, 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 I thought I would read uh, Light and Shade as one, because uh, yeah. I, I must have I know it's the most recent, but I do quite, I, I did quite enjoy that one, and I thought it would come down yeah. quite, uh, go down quite well. And uh, it will depend on the times. There's, there's one that's a five minute slot, so yeah. I might get two poems plus maybe a short one. Uh, so yeah. I would do, yeah. I, I've got other poems that, uh, that you know that I might add with a uh, light and shade, and maybe mm -hmm. one shorter one. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I've I've got a wee choice, so it all depends. Depending, I, I suppose it will depend a lot on the type of audience that are going to be there, and uh, in my mood as well. What I, yeah. what I would like to read. Yeah, but well, it I'm certainly sounds. It. it really sounded like you'd enjoyed writing that one for tonight. Yeah, I did. Well, I did. It, it yeah, came through. Yeah, yeah. So um, I know we, we we touched on before about, you know, you've you've written a poem and, and you've really enjoyed that one and writing it and and sort of how do you move on to your yeah. next poem? You know, how, do, yeah. how does that work for you? Well, I know it's, uh, it's a bit, I find it like reading a book when you read a really good book. It's sometimes you some find it hard to slot right into a new book right away. You need a wee bit of space. And uh, mm. I find that sometimes if if I've got nothing sort of sitting, uh, I finish a poem and I maybe need a wee bit of time to uh, for something else to come into my head or or uh, 
you know, I suppose that's one of the good things about this show that you get a painting that that you can look at and look at and get ideas and get a wee narrative that that you can add to the the descriptive to to finally mm. come up with the sort of finished product. But it can be a wee a challenge, I think, when it's like that blank page, mm. and you're you know you've, you're thinking where will I go from here to get a poem started? Mm. But, uh, yeah. but so, but, uh, so far, I've, I've always managed to come up with something, which yeah. is yeah. which is quite good. And, and do you keep like, a notebook of ideas or note, note them in your phone or something? Like, oh, yeah, that would I be keep, a good idea I keep, for a poem, you know? Yeah, I keep the... I, I've got wee notebooks that are... That are uh, if I'm out walking, I'll maybe jot down the, the story of the walk and uh, and uh, any wee ideas of that what might become a poem. I'll, I'll I'll slot in, and some of my poems come from just maybe a an idea like uh, that, that I think might work as a you know as a, a subject for a poem. And uh, I'll then start to just jot down wee ideas and uh, maybe words or lines that I think would that would uh, sort of enhance the the story, and mm-hmm. and eventually from these wee notes, I managed to get uh, the sort of the, the the full the full poem. But yeah. it's it's yeah. it's quite an interesting process, just going from sometimes nothing to the final. The final version, mm, mm. which and it's, uh, which I'm, I'm terrible for always having wee alterations, even uh, after they're finished. I'm, yeah, um, I never know when it actually is finished. I think when yeah. it's been published, then then well, it's that's right, <laughs> that's right. But mm. uh, it is quite funny that you 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 see it, you like it, and then you think about it, and you think, well, oh, it could be better with this line or that line changed or whatever but I think you've got to eventually as you say once it's published that's it no yeah. more change <laughs> draw draw the line draw yeah the that's line, right yeah. that's right but, and I think it's so much easier for us these days as well because we can write the poetry on our computers and you know if you want to change add in a verse or move a line or change something you haven't got to write out the whole thing yeah. again by hand you know we can Absolutely. just go in cut and paste, copy, yeah. insert lines, insert a whole new verse. Um, even there was one poem that I wrote it, get it the right way around. I think I wrote it with longer lines and then cut them each into half length yeah. or, or the other. No, I think it might have been the other way around. Um, and... You know, to, to do that by hand, you've got to write the whole thing uh, all over again. Yeah, it and, must have been uh, slow and laborious, I would think. Yes, but, yeah. Oh, yeah. Can you imagine great. writing? Imagine writing something like the Ancient Mariner by hand and thinking, "Oh, I wanted to go back and put an extra verse in back there." I, I know. I it must have been absolutely <laughs> horrendous, but I was so yeah. lucky. We are so lucky, but and yeah. that's right because uh, I mean I've had poems where I've I've wrote them uh, as one poem and then realised the first verse is really just a poem on its own, you know, mm. or poems that 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 you change the the running order of the verses continually, yes. and it's yes. so easy to do that that you would maybe have second thoughts about doing if you had to handwrite and sort of mm. rewrite to get it into the new sh- this new shape or new order. But yes. I we are very, very lucky nowadays. Absolutely. Yeah. It don't it almost feel like putting one line on a separate sheet of paper, then putting the pieces of paper together because you're gonna leave it about. But then Aye. you know, goodness. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're quite it, spoiled. Aye, absolutely. It's quite handy because uh, the way I walk sometimes, so even if I'm just sitting listening to music or watching the telly, I can have yeah. my, my my laptop and just sit and doodle about and you know redo a line or change a line, and uh, yeah. you don't need the concentration that you would need if you were handwriting it, you know. Absolutely, but, uh, it does does make our life easier and, and yeah. 
I don't know about you, but I've almost always got my phone with me. So, you know, if I think of something, I can just make some notes, you know, whether yeah. it's for a poem or for a painting, ideas for a new painting and, you know, the way that I'd like to put emphasis on it, you know, if it's a yeah. landscape, how I want that to look and just ideas about anything, you know, like artistic, you can, you can just jot it down instead of forgetting about it. Well, you know, there's nothing worse than if you've got a line or a word that you think, well, that would be really good. And mm. then you've, you've not noted it and then you've, you're yes. desperately try, <laughs> trying to remember it to get it uh, jotted down somewhere. It's torture, that. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, uh, no, we, it, it does make life a lot easier for doing that sort of thing. But, yeah, you know, I just wondered, does it impact the quality of what we write does it make it better or worse or you know do, do, would people have been more considered in yeah. their writing do you think because they couldn't change well, it back perhaps, like we do? yeah i don't but know it's i think for me it's i think for me i say uh, i think i think it does help me to get the poem that i'm happiest with mm. you know but uh, but you're right. It might me as I said earlier. I can I can sit once I've got it in some sort of decent order. I can sit doing anything and just do the worst. Yeah. Whereas yes. If, if, so so maybe I'm not maybe I'm not as concentrated as I should be. <laughs> but, but, but I don't know whether that's a good day, or bad. Think, yeah. yeah. So, I don't yeah. know. But I think I think I think that I'll, I I I'm a wee bit self-critical, so I I work and I work and work until I'm happy, and there's nothing mm. in the poem that that sort of jars my ear, and uh, you know, and by having that ability to shuffle the poem, uh, to um, I've got yes. it that I'm happy. I think it does help me. But mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I hear what, what you say. It could, it could be that you don't spend as much time as, as you should. But I th I th maybe it's just different rather than yeah. better or worse. It's just different. Aye, perhaps. It's a different way of working. Yeah. yeah. And I think I just wonder whether maybe digital artists, you know, do that sort of thing where they take it to a stage and then they might, make a copy and do something different with that copy or with another one, which um, it's, you know, I, I just still love my paint, my oil yeah, paint. I, um, and I love actually using the physical paint and, yeah. and creating on a canvas rather than on a screen. But that's not to, not to say that digital painting doesn't, you know, isn't as good. It's, yeah. it's different. It's just a different way of creating. Yeah. Um, but it maybe opens up to people that wouldn't have been able to produce mm. an oil painting or a watercolour, but they've got the eye for, for you know, doing it digitally. Mm. You know? Yes, yeah, and it's uh, it's quite a different technique. There's um, one of the artists that I I know online, Mark Wallace. He's he does some beautiful digital art paintings, and you know he's put some videos out there of how he works, and it, it's right. just a a completely different way of working. Right. Um, obviously, got similar considerations about colour and tone and composition, but it, the application of of that colour and and the way that it's blended or moved and that is it, just very different. And and of course, you can go back if you don't like something you've done. You can go back. Well, Aye, that's right. There again, with the oil paints. If I don't like something, I can either scrape it back, yeah, yeah, or paint over it, either adding fresh paint on top of wet paint still, or or when it's dry, paint yeah. on top of that. So, you know, the, you know, it's you don't have the ability with using oils to actually go back to a previous version the same way right. a digital artist might. But, yeah, but there again. You know, you start again. Me, <laughs> yes, yeah, but it, it's also about it developing and growing and you know, emerging from the canvas almost. You know, yeah, I yes, I have an idea what I how I want it to come out and what I want to achieve, but sometimes the painting's got other ideas and it, yeah, and you go down a different pathway which can be just as good or even better than yeah. the original 
idea, which is a bit like the poetry, I think, because once you've got it down and then you think, oh, no, it'd be better this way or that way. Um, so I think we, you know, artists, writers, painters, you know, we just need to be open to new ideas coming up during the creative process. And Yeah, that's right. That's right. Ruling things out. So, yeah. And, uh, and also a bit like with your, you know, as you say, with a poem, you know, you've done that one. You've really enjoyed it. What do I do next? I know, do, you, I know. Do, you, do you sometimes worry, well, maybe that was my best poem and can I do another good poem? Have I got another good poem in me? Does that? Yeah, I, I, I know. It's absolutely. But uh, but as you say, you, I think once once a poem comes and then you, you start, you maybe see a word and you think, oh, that, that would you know that you can sort of process an idea from the word that that when that will slot into it and make it that wee bit better, and give mm. a, a, a the likes of that poem, uh, it developed and I get wee ideas for the narrative as well as the descriptive, and uh, mm. I, I I just felt it building up, uh, yeah. you know, from that, and it was just from maybe. Uh, hearing a word or seeing a word and, and it jolted a, a sort of idea mm. and, uh, and you, what you're hoping is that, that that continues into your new poems that, that yes. you know that, that the ideas come uh, as they mm. as they have done you know yes. by yes. I know as I suppose I, th I think more with, with poetry I suppose it's a worry that uh, that you know you finish a poem and there's nothing started that you think I've no ideas in my head and nothing's going to come but so far I've found that something will trigger it like even if it's a, a walk or a scene or a or a thinking back to something that I've done in the hills or whatever and then, yes. and then away we go again and that's what you're always hoping happens I think mm. I think it's, it's quite similar to painting as well, because, you know, you finish a painting, think, OK, and sometimes I've got a whole other, you know, raft of ideas of things where I want to go next and maybe develop from the last one to do something slightly different with the next one and so on. And then sometimes you've you've gone through those ideas and it, it is just looking getting you know those triggers of something that just sparks that um creativity and and those ideas of something yeah. new for the next one so I, you know it's it's very similar i think you know writing yeah, I, painting, that's right. probably sculpting and, and things as well you know quite quite similar in in the the creative process of the of, of the uh, the way that we work but yeah um, yeah well, oh, that's been absolutely fascinating. I really loved your poem again this time. Thank you, often. thank you. And I'm sure it's not going to be your last, and it may not even be your best. There may be even better <laughs> ones <laughs> coming in the pipeline there. Um, but uh, I think that's probably just about all that we've got time for this week, folks. Uh, it's been absolutely fantastic having you on the show again, Martin. Really loved it. Hope that you've enjoyed it again and that you'll come back another time with another of your super poems for us and so um it just remains for me to say well i'll be back next wednesday 7 p.m uk time again for another edition of the poetry of painting with another poet guest and we'll be writing about another painting so um I'm looking forward to that and if anybody would like to sign up to my newsletter to get news of exhibitions, um, like the one that just finished last week, um, which was an excellent exhibition, just sign up on my website, www.fionahooper.com, um, and uh, you'll get all the latest news. It's only about once a month, so you won't be inundated. Anyway, thank you ever so much for watching in, everybody. Great to have you on board. Oh. Chris says, great program, really interesting. Thank you so much, Chris. So pleased that you enjoyed it. And thank you, um, Chris. Thank you so much, Martin. Been, My as pleasure. I say, a great pleasure to have you on. 
and uh, hope to see you again very soon. Yes, thanks very much, Fiona. I enjoyed the show and hope to get back on sometime soon. Definitely. So thanks ever so much and stay safe, everybody. Thanks for listening in. Have a good week and see you next week. So it's bye from Martin and bye from me. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.